Hey guys, so this is a video that I never wanted to make, nor did I really anticipate having to do this, but here we are. I had all sorts of plans for different Daytona stuff coming up, like a maintenance video, some different mods, a Diablo tuner review, and more, but that's all gonna have to wait. Why? Because my Hemi engine is toast at the moment. This happened a few weeks ago, but I'll get into all the details and give you the full story of what happened, and also where I will be going from here in terms of vehicles. So let's get into this crap. So first off, for some Mars Speed background, if you're a longtime subscriber, you'll know that I started the channel with my 2009 Dodge Charger SXT, and that car is really the foundation for where I am today, despite all the hate and negativity that the V6 gets on social media. I literally owe my channel to that car. I bought it in April of 2015, my first vehicle in my name, and it's still going strong as of today with over 211,000 miles, as you can see in my maintenance video for it. I can tell you right now that I'm never getting rid of it because I just love the thing and I grew up in that vehicle through my late teens and early 20s and also if I get rid of it it's probably not worth very much either so it's not really worth it for me to do that. As the YouTube channel grew and I started making a bit of money with it, I finally went for a Hemi as I've always wanted one and it made sense to step up. I wasn't interested in getting any loans or stretching myself, so I just waited for a few months, looked around, and comfortably bought a 2006 RT Daytona with the 5.7 liter Hemi V8 in cash. And again, me being able to own that car is a big thanks to everyone who watches me on YouTube and supports the channel, because that was basically full YouTube money that paid for that vehicle. This one was limited at 165 out of 200 for Canada, and it was my favorite color, Torred, so for me that was the one. Plus I love the body style for some reason, I don't know why, but I really, really love it, and I think I like it a little more even than the modern ones. I couldn't find any decent SRT8s in my city as well, I tried to find an 06 to 10 SRT8, but I settled for the RT. Obviously I haven't really made many videos about this car on my channel, so if you're just a casual Marspeed subscriber, you might not have even known that I own the car. But I do have the two Torred chargers right now. Now I just bought the thing in July 2019, last summer, can't remember how many miles were on it, I'll have to throw that up on the screen, but I barely drove it in the winter, and finally got to drive it a bunch this summer. So almost a month ago at the end of September, I was driving on the highway for about 2 hours, coming back from seeing my girlfriend in Montreal, and I live in Toronto right now, and I got right off in Kingston, which is kind of the midway point, so 2 and a half hours I guess between Montreal and Toronto, got right off the highway, filled up the tank of gas, went to go start it, and that was it. The car kind of shook awkwardly, hesitated, and then wouldn't start at all. In my mind, I just kind of knew that it was that dreaded valve seat drop, and that's what it was. More on that issue in just a second. So I had to call CAA, or AAA if you're in the United States, and it was just a terrible day after that for me. CAA normally would drive you home, but not with the COVID protocol. They literally told me to find my own way home, and I was two and a half hours from my house, so it wasn't exactly easy. So I had to Uber to the train grab an expensive last minute ticket, train back to my house in Toronto, Uber home from the station, and coordinate the pick up and drop off of the Daytona which was stuck at the gas station. So I had a tow to my uncle's house where we did check it out and found that there was no compression in cylinder 6 and there were some burnt and bent spark plugs so we figured the Hemi was toast. I towed it to More Power Performance which is a specialty Mopar shop near me to get a professional opinion. So my guy there, Tony, did confirm the valve seat had dropped and subsequently caused some damage to the piston as well. I do want to make a full in-depth video on this issue, but basically this is somewhat of a common problem on the 2006-2008 5.7 Hemis on the Chargers and Magnums and also 300s. The 09s and ups were the Eagle version with variable valve timing, so they didn't have this issue anymore. So just to explain the issue just a little bit, in the head of the intake valve there's a ring, so that's called the valve seat, and the intake valve closes up against the metal ring. So this valve seat is made of a different material than the aluminum head, which is stronger, so when the parts get hot, the aluminum head and the valve seat metal will expand at different rates, and the valve seat can fall out of the head, which is called dropping a valve seat, and that's exactly what happened here. So that ring, aka valve seat, is it's strong, but it's also very brittle, so when it drops, it will start cracking into different sized pieces, and those chunks get pressed into the piston below, and cause damage to the piston, since there's only so much space between the head and the piston. So the valve seat will drop, shatter, and then the pieces hit the piston and destroy the spark plugs. Other problems can arise from this as well, so like if a piece gets wedged and it won't let the valve close, then the piston will come up and slam into the valve, also causing damage, but I'll talk more about that kind of thing in my valve seat drop video. 
So usually when just the valve seat drops, you can still start the car, but the piston will be slamming against everything and the cylinder will be destroyed, and could potentially get into another cylinder and take that one out. The only way to kind of get lucky and avoid damage is if the valve seats of three to four different cylinders drop at the same time, and then they just kind of sit there as a ring hanging on the valve, and nothing will happen after that because the car won't start. So the rings just sit there and hang on the valve, they don't touch or hit anything, and if that happens, you can just fix the heads and that's it, and that's a much cheaper cost. But if not, there's damage to the rest of the engine and you gotta rebuild it. So me and my uncle started the car and ran it briefly when we were trying to figure out what was going on with it, and of course that would probably have caused more damage to the car, and the cylinder 6 with the dropped valve seat had no compression. The car actually ran and drove, but it was just terrible, you could feel a vibration shaking through your whole body just at idle. So that's the summary of what happened. Uh, now for my future plans, I went and looked at some SRT392 Challengers, as that would ideally be my next vehicle. But it just didn't make sense for me right now. I almost actually bought this 2018 SRT392 Yellow Jacket that I will show on screen. But I had planned for another year of saving to get a car like that. I don't really want to take a huge loan. I prefer buying my cars outright in cash. Why pay a lot more financing now if I'm able to avoid that and just buy the full thing down the road? Also, it's just about winter here in Canada, so I wouldn't even be able to drive it that much. And the more I thought about it, it just didn't make sense right now. And another aspect was that I also feel like I didn't get enough out of my Daytona. And I want to finally build up an engine and see how it runs. Many people suggested I do this on my 3.5 liter V6 charger, but I just didn't think that was worth it. Uh, I wanted more power than that. But for this car, I think it is worth it. I love the car. I think it looks gorgeous. So even if I got a new car, I still would have wanted to rebuild this at some point. And once it's rebuilt, I can either keep it longer or sell it. So that's the direction I am going with. And the car is actually in the shop and should be ready in four to six weeks. As of now, I've got my trusty V6. So to make a long story short, my 5.7 liter Hemi V8 dropped a valve seat, caused some further damage, and I'm now rebuilding the car and upgrading it, and next summer I have a goal of buying a 6.4 or maybe a Hellcat, but I want a Challenger this time, not a Charger. So hopefully the rebuild can provide some good content for the channel, but the goal of course is to change the heads, rebuild everything, add headers, a full exhaust system, performance cam, change the rear diff, and upgrade just about everything that I can. Tony and I will build the full list soon so I can better explain everything in a video, but the goal will be around 480 horsepower it looks like for now, and the car will be a hell of a lot beastlier than it was. And remember I can always add more in the future like a supercharger or something like that if I really want to take it to another level. I did consider doing a 392 stroker motor, but that was just going to be too much money spent in my eyes for this car since what I'm doing right now is going to be about half of the price of what a stroker would cost. So that's my update on my dead Daytona guys. When it's ready I will have a ton of content on it. I've done many things to it behind the scenes that I never made videos on. But I have footage filmed. So slowly I can start to release that stuff alongside my other stuff on the channel. Once the Daytona is back up and running. So that's the update on my V8 for today. What do you guys think about my decision? Think it makes sense or no? And are you excited to see how loud and powerful the car is going to become? Because I sure am. So thanks for watching, make sure to like and subscribe for tons more Mopar content on my vehicles and also the world of Mopar, and I'll see you guys in the next video.